In this video we're gonna look at how I took these photos with the Holga 120 CFN. The CFN stands for colored flash or whatever and it is one of many variants of the Holga 120 toy camera. This camera is probably the most well-known toy camera in the world I think. It has a very um, specific look to its photos and it's made completely out of plastic. Even the lens is made out of plastic. So the charm with this camera I guess is supposed to be that it is very crappy and <laughs> bad quality and it takes bad quality photos but they do have a certain feel to them. And the camera only costs $40 and it is extremely lightweight. That is one of the first thing you notice about it. Here you can see me turn the wheel to choose different flash colors. And the lens is uh, an f8 lens and you can also set it to f11. The shutter is this small little thing here and uh, it's kind of hard to take a picture without like moving the camera because of the shutter. Here you advance the film and uh, here you turn on and off the flash. There is also versions of this camera with a normal flash without any colors. Of course you can set white as a color on this flash so you can have that as well. I would say this is probably the most advanced uh, version of the Holga 120 camera. But it still only costs like $40. If you open the door here uh, you can see that um, this is where you insert the film. And it is 120 medium format film. And uh, you can also actually select between uh, uh, 6x6 or 6x4.5 uh, photos. So if you choose 16 here, you have a small, slightly smaller frame. There's also a tripod socket and you can actually set the camera in bulb mode, which means you can have long exposures. The focusing mechanism is zone focusing and uh, in the manual it actually says what these different symbols mean. One person, one meter, three persons, two meter, several persons, six meter and then you kind of have infinity. Uh, this is where you set the aperture between f8 or f11. And um, I shot two kinds of films with this camera. The 100T Max black and white film and uh, the Portra 400 color film. You also get this nice little strap. And that's nice. Uh, so we have a complete setup. And with this little square you can select uh, what um, frame size you want. 6x6 or 6x4.5. And yeah, that's basically it. You insert the batteries to power the flash. If you would buy a version of this camera without a flash, obviously you will not have to use some batteries. And then you insert this little thing and off you go. I um, shot uh, two rolls of Portra 400 and one roll of uh, T-Max 100. This is obviously with the black and white T-Max 100. And indoors with the flash you get pretty decent exposures. But I wanted to try this outdoors. The interesting thing with this camera is that you cannot set the shutter speed. And it, I don't think even the manual says what kind of shutter speed it is. I think it's around one hundredth of a second. Uh, so you have to guess quite a bit when it comes to exposure. But uh, fairly often the exposure came out good, I would say. Here you see me taking uh, a shot of a house I've seen on other film photography YouTube channels, that, that is what you use medium format film cameras for. <laughs> Taking photos of, of houses from a slight angle. So yeah. I um, continued to the forest cemetery uh, with my son Max here to uh, try to get some more landscapey shots. But on the way there I tried to take a shot in a slightly dark environment beneath this bridge here. And uh, yeah, the picture <laughs> became extremely underexposed. So that's kind of one of the pitfalls of this camera that since you cannot really control the um, exposure, you will have to learn in what kind of situations you can actually use this camera. And in many situations where the light is kind of bad, you cannot really use the camera, unfortunately. But as long as the light is good, you get pretty decent exposures.
As I mentioned earlier, one of the main benefits with this camera, uh, besides being cheap, is that it is extremely lightweight. Since it's all made out of plastic including the lens, it feels like it doesn't weigh anything. So it's the perfect walk around camera uh, or a camera to bring to a party or, or whatever where you don't really want to care about the camera being broken or anything. And in good light you can get decent shots like this one. They are not like very blurry except in the corners, in the, in the middle they are pretty sharp. But uh, a disclaimer however is that every Holga is kind of unique. So. If you are a little bit unlucky, your Holga might be less sharp in its lens than mine. Every Holga is truly unique and what is usually meant by that is that it is uh, broken or <laughs> bad in unique ways. For example, my specific Holga, uh, it had this little padding to hold the film in place that actually uh, got loose when I used the camera and got stuck in the middle of the film so it destroyed a couple of shots in my roll. <laughs> so that's uh, one of the ways my Holga is unique. Uh, when I got home I uh, used some glue to, to fix the little pad just to get it to stay in its place. Uh, here I'm trying one of the colored flashes for the first time. I wanted to try it outside just to see what would happen. I used a blue flash and uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm not sure how happy I am with the result, but at least uh, the blue flash worked. It became blue, the light. Here is uh, a another shot of a building that looks a bit interesting now that it's being built. So when I got home again I wanted to try some more color photography indoors. This is how it can look with a normal uh, non-colored flash. And I actually tried some double exposures with colored flashes in different colors. And these are among my favorite shots with this camera. They come out quite cool. Uh, I basically took two or three shots and I switched color of the flash in between. Here is a shot with the red flash only. And uh, yeah, here is a shot outdoors without a flash. And uh, here are some more shots that I took with this camera. All in all, uh, I'm not sure what I feel about the Holga. Uh, it is quite a fun toy, but the pictures are <laughs> pretty crappy and I'm not sure how much I like the look. Uh, the most fun photos that I was the most happy with from this camera was the ones with colored flashes and double exposures, otherwise this camera is quite honestly quite crappy <laughs> and I'm not even sure I would say it's worth $40. Uh, use it if you like the look of these photos otherwise do not buy it I would say. Guys don't forget to subscribe to my photography newsletter. It comes out once a month and it has inspiration, tips about great photographers and other cool stuff. Sign up for free at mwroll.com and please leave a like on this video it helps this channel a lot. And don't forget to subscribe. I try to make new videos every week. <laughs> That's it for this video. See you soon. Over and out.